Hello, fellow followers. Welcome back to Fan Scene. Greg here, and today I have for you the Wishmaster Collection, a Vestron video rewind review, as it were, because uh, in this video I'm going to cover all four films. I'm going to talk about them, but I also wanted to show off this Vestron Collector's uh, edition of Wishmaster that I just bought. I know it was released in 2017. It's actually number nine in the Vestron releasing order here, so number nine. Uh, but it had been, I missed it when it first came out when it was first released and uh, I had been waiting for the price to go down. It's been going for like $35, $40 a piece uh, up until recently for whatever reason. Right now on Amazon, you can get it for $21.94 or Best Buy for $21.99 as in the making of this video. That's the prices as in the making of this video. But I actually went to my local Best Buy and bought it there. It, they actually had it on the shelves with the slip cover intact. So check your local Best Buys and see if they have this there for you guys. And you know, you know, maybe you'll get lucky and get the slip cover like I did. But if not, you can always order it on Amazon and Best Buy. But uh, I wanted to show off the casing and stuff here real quick. Basically front and back for you guys. Before we get into the films, uh, this is the front of it here. And I love this Wishmaster artwork here. This is beautiful design. Look at that. That is so cool and creepy and great and awesome. I love it. Never would I have thought this... Uh, Wishmaster series would have got a set like this. Uh, the first movie, yeah, I could I could see it getting a nice set, but the all four films, never would have imagined. And as for the quality of the Blu-rays and the picture, the picture quality are is amazing on all four of them. Perfect for Blu-ray and nothing uh, bad I can say about them. The sound is great. Uh, it's got the you know the Dolby HD uh, DTS audio and stuff like that. Uh, there's all the special features. The first disc with the Wishmaster one there has all the special features. So if you want to pause it and check out all, all the special features you get with this if you don't know if you did not have this and you were wondering about it so if you can make it out i hope it's clear enough for you guys but there you go and uh so there is the front and the back and the, the you know without the slip cover it's the same it's the same so let's get into wishmaster part one wes craven presents he will tempt you with your every desire and will turn your wildest dreams into your worst nightmares. <laughs> Wishmaster, be careful what you wish for. I love the first Wishmaster movie. I think it is a horror classic from the 90s, and I also feel like it is the culmination of 80s horror, and I will explain why I think that as we get into the video a little more with the first movie. But let's go over the first, uh, the plot of the first movie real quick. Andrew Devoff plays the evil Jin. It's an evil genie who is imprisoned inside like a red uh, gem, diamond, ruby diamond type thing many, many years ago in Persia, and then is uh, suddenly awoken in 1997, in modern 1997, due to a series of unfortunate accidents and as he is awoken he is searching for the the woman who woke him played by Tammy Lauren who uh, yeah, I love listening to the interview she said that she wanted the audience to think that oh no not this woman she can't handle this she's a chain smoker she lost her parents in a fire she's trying to take care of her younger sister she's overworked you know she's a gemologist and everything so she, she just didn't want you to think that you know this woman can handle it but you know as horror fans we know she can handle it because that's the type of uh, final girls we root for so she awakens him and uh, as he is searching for her he stops you know these people and uh, grants their wishes and he takes their souls in return for a, a wish to grant and to trying to get to her and if she uh, wishes all three of her wishes because she gets three wishes uh, the evil jinn and his species will be released and hell will reign on earth and so he he wants that to happen and I love Andrew Devos performance in this he basically he's like this sort of Loki-esque villain where, uh, you know, yes, he'll give you a wish, but once once you he grants your wish, it's a it turns out horribly, it goes really bad, and then he gets your soul in the end. And he does it in a very great, uh, like, smooth, uh, operating, like, very sophisticated, evil, genius-type way. And I really love that, and I really love his performance in this. And he plays both, you know, the in the gin, in the makeup, and in the human form, he plays the character very well. He gives a great voice. And then Tammy Lauren's character as the final girl was really great. And once it finally comes to, you know, her versus the djinn and, uh, you know, she's wished two wishes. How's, how's this going to end? How she's going to get around? Not wishing her third wish, how she's going to stop the djinn. And I think it plays out very brilliantly. Uh, very great. I, I love the, I love the final little way they, they conclude the film, the first film. I just, I just, I just enjoyed it. It's a great film. And, um, so, as far as I say the combination of 80s horror, I say that because if for those of you who aren't horror fans or have never seen this or don't know much about this, because I'm sure a lot of the horror fans already know a lot about what I'm going to go into here. But for those who don't know, this has a horror pedigree behind it that's just 
pure horror history, and I feel like it is the full on example of how 80s horror ended essentially in 1997. It is directed by Robert Kurtzman, who is one of the founders of KMB uh, Practical Effects, a, a effects studio uh, with Greg Nicotero. They did many, many practical effects and special effects in horror movies in the 80s. Greg Nic Nicotero himself actually is a, a producer, executive producer on this. And not only that, Wes Craven is, uh, it's this Wes Craven presents Wishmaster, the first movie. He, granted, he didn't really have much to do with it, but I did learn that he did show up on set and he did help up with the script so Wes Craven is involved in the first Wishmaster movie and then on top of that we have Angus Grimm the tall man from Phantasm doing the opening narration to the film and the fire gave birth to the djinn creatures condemned to dwell in the void between the worlds and also with a Phantasm connection, Reggie from the Phantasm movies plays a pharmacist who gets an untimely ending due to the Wishmaster and a Wish, uh, brought on by Buck Flowers, who is also a sort of horror le legend as well, too. Uh, so that's really great right there, a the little connection there. Not only that, we get Ted Raimi, the brother of Sam Raimi, in a cameo appearance that sort of bookends the film. Uh, Ted, Ted Raimi is a horror icon and um, a great character actor all around. And then, and then... The one that I think most people know about, we not only get Kane Hodder, Jason Voorhees, Tony Todd, Candyman, Robert England, Freddy Krueger, all three in this movie. This is essentially the Expendables of Horror, and it's so cool because basically Tony Todd and uh, Kane Hodder's uh, came, they're like cameos appearances and the Wishmaster sort of takes them out and that's that's kind of interesting you know he takes out these icons of like this and then Robert England has a bigger part uh, he's sort of responsible for why the evil djinn gets released into modern day America because he buys the Persian statue that the gym is imprisoned in and then it gets broken apart and the gym gets out it's like that and I really feel like you know he has a bigger part in this movie Robert England does and it's really great to see Robert England you know one of the things he took the reason was so he didn't have to put on makeup and then again and then in the movie he does sort of have to get some makeup near the end of the film, but uh, he has a really great role in it, and it's it's a very pivotal role in the film. So I really like that, and I really love how all these connect and create this, and it has amazing practical effects in the first movie. The CGI is very dated. It's very bad. It's early stages of CGI, but it actually sort of adds charm to the film because you have all these amazing practical effects, and then every once in a while you get these really cheesy uh, CGI effects, and you're like, oh, but it, it works. And as far as the first movie goes, I think, like I said, I think it's a horror classic from the 90s and the end of 80s a horror in general. So now let's move on to Wishmaster Part 2. Wishmaster 2, evil never dies. It's over. The first Wishmaster was a moderate success at the box office, and they pretty much greenlit a sequel to the film during production. However, with Wishmaster 2, it was sent straight to video, and in those days, straight-to-video movies weren't very well respected, so we lost a lot of the horror connection in the second movie. Kurtzman bailed. He wanted to, you know, do more theatrical uh, movies and stuff. He didn't want to do home video. Uh, Wes Craven's gone. Uh, you know, we the practical effects aren't as good as they were, but they're, they're still there. And, uh, you know, we don't get Tony Todd. We don't get uh, Kane Hodder. We don't get Robert England. We don't get Reggie. We don't get all the horror, you know, people coming back. But it, as they say, it was really set up to set up Andrew Divoff's gin. Because Andrew Divoff returns as the gin. He gets an upgrade in makeup here. Well, I actually think the uh, the makeup in the first film is better, but he gets a new uh, makeup design in this. And uh, in this film, uh, essentially the Persian statue that the gym is in is now at a museum, and the museum is being robbed by a couple people. You can't really tell who they are at first. Uh, they get into a gunfight with the security guards. The statue gets shot. The gym comes out. One of the members gets killed, and uh, the one of the the other one who is a female actually has the gym in her coat, and she gets shot, and it hits the gym, and sort of so she sort of like gets it and she awakens the gin this time around but he gets arrested so you know he puts on his human face and he gets arrested and he puts it and he gets put in prison and so the new final girl um who's actually pretty smoking hot in this movie and, <laughs> and so she starts having these dreams of him he's in prison and uh as the gin is in prison he's not as 
clever or suave as he was in the first movie. He's always walking around like this weird smile that's creepy and unnerving, and it, it just doesn't suit him as well. And his wishes aren't as cool or as clever and, and granting as they were in the first movie. Even Andrew Devoff said that, you know, he preferred the first movie. He felt uh, the Jin became a little more mean spirited, even though he's basically killing people, taking care of their souls. He felt he came a little more mean spirited with the wishes in the second one. So he preferred the first movie. Uh, but yeah, so basically he's in prison and he's trying to collect like 800 souls so that he can get the woman, the new final girl, to wish her three wishes and the gin released and uh, them to take over the world, hell on earth. So, and he makes friends with this Russian, um, like mafiosis type guy, and then they they break out. Uh, you know, she she tries to defeat him. Uh, she ends up wishing her two wishes, and she gets together with this priest that she, uh, you know that she used to be in love with. And it all culminates in uh, Las Vegas, <laughs> the city of sin. You know, in a, in a casino of how it ends. Uh, the special effects, like I said, is are not as good. The CGI is uh, not as much as used in the second one because it's very more low budget and stuff. Um, <laughs> one of the things that, that really gets me is like with the final girl in this, uh, it's like they wanted to show her naked. And they do a lot of scenes where they like show her in her underwear and even in the shower, but they never get to the point where it shows her naked, which kind of might maybe could have helped. But as far as the second movie goes, I don't hate it, but I, it is a step down, big step down from the first movie. But it is, it is, it's still a decent watch, and I don't mind it. So now let's move on to Wishmaster 3. Wishmaster 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell. Here, Katie, 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 Katie. Okay, Wishmaster 3 is a big nosedive in the franchise. It's another straight-to-video release. This time we lose Andrew Divoff as the Jin, And uh, I find it funny because in this one... Sean Connery's son, Jason Connery, actually takes on the human form of the djinn, and they hire, uh, I believe his name is John Novak, to play the djinn in makeup. And uh, that was something Robert Kurtzman uh, in the first movie said he didn't want to do. He didn't want to have somebody else playing the djinn and somebody else playing the human form because of the logistics and trying to match it. Uh, so that's why they used Andrew Divoff, who, who was just game for all of it. So in this one, they actually did that, which they didn't want to do. This is extremely low budget. The You can tell because the production was moved from Los Angeles. The first two movies were made in Los Angeles. The third movie and the fourth movie are shot in Canada. Uh, but with the third movie, I, I believe it's a different gen, personally. It could be the same gen, but it doesn't really... Uh, it doesn't really float, but anyways, <laughs> so the third movie, we move to a college setting and it becomes sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer-esque. Uh, we meet our new final girl, uh, AJ Cook, who's from Criminal Minds. Uh, she's a young, uh, smart, tough college uh, girl. Uh, and, you know, she's in a relationship with her boyfriend. She lost her parents in a car accident. Um, her professor, played by Jason Connery, Sean Connery's son, uh, he's like this very timid guy. He finds this uh, box and she goes to investigate on it and she opens it up, finds the, the red gem. Uh, she awakens the genie, but she leaves as always. Cause they always seem to like leave right when they awaken thing and uh, the genie. So the gin comes out and the professor's there and he coaxes the professor into wishing for what he wants. And we get these two women topless so we we move on to nudity in the films and we do get start to get nudity in the films the first two doesn't really have nudity you know the gen grants him the wish ends up killing him and then taking his face and so for most of the movie it is jason connery walking around in a suit you know being the wish master trying to have that same sort of vibe as andrew divoff and i never thought i would have to i would say that uh somebody related to sean connery doesn't have the gravitas as andrew divoff he just didn't have it but He's he's acceptable and uh, you like I said you can tell it's low budget because the gin barely appears in makeup John Novak but he uh, here and there he does and they sort of get a little more religious in this one which isn't fine that doesn't bother me um, he gets a little more religious they call down Angel Angel Michael tip and who possesses the girl's boyfriend and but he's kind of worthless he does absolutely nothing just has this weird weird funky sword. <laughs> but it ends up, you know, once again, they need the three wishes, uh, open up the gates of hell, and it culminates into this big, like, rooftop college uh, battle between uh, this girl, the djinn, and uh, with the sword, sort of like the angel thing. And, um, you know, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's not great. It's something I would, I, I would, 
I would watch again, maybe, you know, it's not one I would be like, I don't want to ever see that one again. I would, you know, if I'm like bored or something, I, I would put it on, especially if I go back and try to watch all four movies. But that's essentially Wishmaster 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell is what it was called. Uh, <laughs> so that's that one. So let's move on to the fourth and final Wishmaster film. Oh, boy. Wishmaster 4, The Prophecy Fulfilled. With the fourth and final Wishmaster film, is a bad one. Um, I can honestly say, I, I hate saying that I didn't like it, but I didn't like it, but it's also in a vein of a movie where uh, I I may watch it again one day. <laughs> but in this one, um, we the, John Novak come back as the djinn, and he's the only cast member to come back from the third movie as the djinn. And then he, uh, his human face, I can't remember the actor's name at the moment, uh, but he's from Battlestar Galactica, the new series. Um, he basically, he takes over the role as the human face of the djinn, which he, he actually matches up with the djinn more than uh, Jason Connery did with the djinn in part three. Uh, but so, so essentially this woman and her boyfriend, they seem to be very much in love and uh, something happens along the way and her boyfriend ends up in a paralyzed in a wheelchair. And so uh, she goes to their his friend who's a lawyer who will take on the face of the djinn. Uh, and them two sort of seem to be falling in love while her uh, boyfriend is sitting at their house, you know, sulking and uh, depressed and doesn't want nothing to do with his girlfriend anymore. And so, uh, you know, the the rich lawyer guy kind of buys this thing off the uh, eBay, he says, and he tries to give it to the girl and uh, out falls the red gem and she wakes up the gen again. But of course she leaves and then the gen appears and takes the face of the lawyer and, uh, <laughs> you know, the wishes and the evil, all that starts happening again. And then they, and this time they also bring in a, um, hunter, a gen hunter that is completely pointless in the movie. He's uh, completely out of place. He shows up for maybe about 10 minutes of the film and then they just get rid of him. I don't know what they're thinking. They kind of just like threw him in there and took him out immediately. But uh, something that this one does that I actually give it respect for is that the woman, she wishes all three wishes in this. And so we also get to see like the gins in prison behind the firewall, the other gins that went out. But the thing with the third wish is that she wishes that she could love you know, she, who she thinks is the lawyer for who he really is. And so it's a wish only she can grant. She has to find a way to fall. The genie has, the djinn has to find a way for her to fall in love with him for who he really is. And you know, that's not going to work out. And so all this like layer upon relationship type stuff. And, uh, uh, the best thing I can say about this one is we get a lot more boobs in this movie than we do in any other movie, even a final girl, which is very, very rare that the final girl um, gets naked. But uh, the best part is she has a really great set of boobs and a really, really nice butt. That, that, I mean, that's probably the best parts of the movie, but uh, she's not the only one that we see. There's some other boobs, but that's seriously, and I don't mean to bring that up, but it's like, Watching this movie, you're going to have to have some kind of hook because it's cheesy, it's bad, the dialogue is bad, the plot is stupid. Uh, I give them credit for trying to be creative and get answer all three wishes all instead of dragging out the movie to try to get to the very end for the third wish to happen. Um, I applaud them for casting a woman who was, you know, the final girl to get naked. I, I like that. I like that. And she had a great, great body. But as far as the fourth movie goes, I, I would be hard-pressed to say if I will ever watch it again, I... Honestly, I probably will. I probably will watch it again because that's me. Sometimes I get bored and I, I watch stupid stuff sometimes. But that is it for all four movies in the Wishmaster Collection. This Vestron Video Rewind Review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was going to be kind of a long one, but I thank you guys uh, for everybody that watched this long to stay and watch it. And let me know what you guys thought about all this in the comment section down below. Have you seen all four Wishmaster films? And if so, which one is your favorite? Seriously, just because I like the first one the most doesn't mean that other people don't like three better or four better or two better. Let me know all that in the comment section down below. And if you did like what you saw here, maybe consider hitting the like button subscribing, hitting the bell for notification. That would be awesome if I earned your subscription or joining in becoming a channel member. That'd be even better. That'd be great. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, please share the video out for everybody to see. I thank you all for watching. Wherever you are, please have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Always support physical media. It is the superior format. Godspeed and be careful what you wish for.